Good morning. If you notice on the uh, work table out there, yes, it's another radio from Bob. And I'm going to clean it up. That's why it's outside. This was Bob's grandmother's radio. It needs a lot of work. I can't do anything with the dial. Um, anything like that that kind of work I really can't do much with it it obviously needs a grill cloth and stuff like that I don't have grill cloth and used to have some but it would never match anyways um, it's supposed to be shortwave but I, Bob said something about this is not the right uh, dial um, the radio guy that worked on this years ago put that in so that's not the correct dial for that that looks just like AM and it's supposed to be an AM and short wave it's out on the bench here now because it needs a good cleaning it needs a new cord definitely it contains the loop stick Actually, I keep calling it a loop stick. The loop coil, which is removable right here. You got a band of wood right here that I got to remove. Takes the octal tubes. And it has a dial string, which is something that I never could do. But anyways, first things first, it's going to need a good cleaning out. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut the cord off. Once we get it cleaned up, I'll bring it in the shop. And we'll be starting going through it and see if I can do a restoration on it. Now, let's get the information from the bottom here and see what it is. Okay, it's a Ward's Airline Model 93. BR-720A It contains a 35L6 6SQ7 6 35 L6 There's two of them Six, Two 6SQ7s six 6SK7 6 6 6A8 35Z4. Obviously, this is a uh, series wide set, but it's got a transformer in it. That's weird. That is weird. Well, it's a silver tone, but that's. Bob said that's not the right dial because it's supposed to be short wave. This is the tuning here, which obviously the dial cords off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a three position switch here on all volume, and a two position switch here. Two position on all volume. One, two, three. In three position here in the dial. Control. Now there's a power transformer in it. I have no idea why it's using 35 volt tubes. It definitely is a power transformer. You can see it down there on the right hand corner. Let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, can't read that. Printer's uh, all faded off of it. Uh, like I say, I took the cord off. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the loop stick off and uh, clean this chassis. I'll get the uh, air compressor out and clean this out before I bring this into the uh, shop. So uh, we're going to be starting on this very soon. I put the scope off to the side. Okay, so 
this is how she comes apart here. I don't want to lose these screws. In effect, you better let these screws fall on the bench because I'm liable to carry this off and drop them on the ground. Okay, so now the antenna coil's got to be unhooked from here. <clears throat> and we'll mark those wires. But before I do anything, we'll get the air gun out here and see if I can clean this up a little bit. While the air compressor is charging up in the background there, uh, this was out of place and this is broken. So this is basically how the coil is. Uh, we'll just put some glue on the, on the corners on that. Maybe with some uh, hot glue to glue the wires to the top of these uh, things here. So we're going to hit it with the air compressor again. We still got a lot of dirt in here. So we're going to do that now. Okay, it's relatively easy. To, you don't have to really mark these wires. We got one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So. We're not using these two terminals here, we're just using this. I'll remove this and then I can remove this whole assembly here. Now, I got a lot of gluing to do on this, so that's going to be a separate piece I'm going to do outside here. We'll get that off. There's a little wire here. <clears throat> and um, I think that's the external antenna if you want to add to it. It was, looks like it was glued down. So I'm going to take care of that. I, got, I can see there's a lot of dirt on the chassis that the air gun didn't get out. But I don't want to do too much until I get this whole assembly out of here and get some glue on it. All right, I got the loops uh, antenna in the shed, in the shop on the bench. And I hot glued all the pieces of particle board that was holding the thing together. But of course, I ran out of hot glue sticks. What else is new? <laughs> uh, and there was only two chassis bolts holding this in right here. So I'll see if I, I don't think I got anything that would fit that. Uh, the speaker wire is all brittle. It's got an RCA plug on the end permanent magnet speaker so I'll replace that wire it plugs in right here uh, this here came off the electrolytic so what I'm going to do is I'm uh, after I clean it up I'm going to glue this back on uh, for cosmetic reasons and we're going to replace the electrolytics anyways Two gang tuning capacitor, which I will check for shorts. Uh, pilot light and the dial uh, is pretty bad here. Now, Bob says there's a short wave band on here, but uh, he says this dial is not original, from what if I understood him correctly, because uh, as you can see, this is strictly. AM broadcast. I gotta clean this up here. Let's see what we got underneath here. Let's take a look at the bottom here. Dial cord. That's my worst nightmare on radios a dial cord because I can't string string them. No. <laughs> well, the dial works here. So it's just a matter of getting this to connect to this, and I don't see how that could be coupled to that, to that, to that, to that. <laughs> oh boy, dog bone resistors. Easy chassis to service. There's an audio output transformer and there's a power transformer. What I can't understand is 
why is this using 35 volt tubes, 25 or 35 L6 tubes, when it's got a power transformer in it? That's what I can't understand. 50L6 is here. Why? It's got a power transformer. We've got to get the schematic on this. We definitely have to get a schematic on this. And this is riveted here. So I don't see how that could have been changed over. This is how I clean my stuff out. This brush is used only for dusting things off and then I blow it out with the vacuum cleaner and I don't want to do this in the shop. And we'll just take the, get a smaller paintbrush and dry paintbrush and get in here and clean it out. And we'll do the same to the cabinet. Alright, I used hot glue on all these because these things slide in, but I ran out. Now there's a uh, an extra thin wire running over here, but it seems to be separate. I guess it's supposed to be running like this. Because these wires here are a little heavier, but I have to get some more hot glue sticks unless I can find another one in my shop here somewhere. And the wires are relatively easy uh, to put back because they're just one, two, three, and four right here. But I got this thing stronger, but it's missing the piece like this here. It's missing the piece. This is what's left of it on each side. So I'm gonna take a little piece of wood and hot glue it when I get more hot glue from here to here. And I'm not sure what, I don't know if these come in different sizes. This is only like a 10 water hot glue gun, but there's only a little tiny bit left in this thing. It seems to be, well, not all that strong. I could epo epoxy it. But anyways, that needs work. So we'll put that aside. All right, I cleaned it all off really good. Um, I don't know if I can do anything with this dial or not. It's hanging up on here. I've straightened it out a little bit. But there's no way I'm going to be able to deal with this dial cord. There's a dial cord hanging on the inside of this shaft and this dial cord hanging on the outside. When it comes to dial cords, I'll tell you right now, is another thing that the old blind tinker cannot do. Um, back when I started out in 1959, I was never able to do dial cords. I never could throughout all the years. If it was a simple string I usually can do it but a complicated one like this no so I have no idea this fortunately is still connected but there's some kind of an arrangement down here I have no idea so I'm not even going to deal with that I'm dealing with the electronics that I can handle. Now this electrolytic here, and I showed you the, I showed you the label on that, so it might have been a replacement. Probably was replaced years ago. I think Bob mentioned something about somebody worked on it. So um, there's an electrolytic here that's going to have to go. I don't 
have the schematic now. I think Bob said he tried getting it and couldn't. Here's a wire that's on the antenna circuit, these here, that looks to me like uh, it's losing some of its insulation. You see how the dial cord is here? There's some on the outside and some on the inside. But I'm not, like I say, I'm not even going to deal with that right now. And Bob, I don't know if he knows how to do the dial cord or not. He was not able to get a schematic now. In the beginning of this video, I had read off the model number. So I probably have already posted it on the video. Because I usually do when I edit, I pause my video, write down the, the number if I can't read it and uh, flash it up on the screen. Actually, I'm getting too close here. I've been using the Kodak ZE-1. I'm getting too close and probably out of focus. So, I think the first thing to do is, I cut the cord off, but you can see it's brittle. You can hear it cracking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the cord out of there. All right, I broke away the uh, hardened, corroded, actually, um, the rubber was hard as a rock and was breaking and cracking, power cord, and I left two stubs on here so I'll know where they go, and I just took a ohm meter reading from each side of the line to the chassis to see if this was line connected, which it shouldn't be because it's got a power transformer. But the big mystery is, because I don't have the schematic and I don't think it can be gotten, is uh, why is it using 50L6 tubes in there? 35Z4 is what's engraved in the socket in white lettering here. This is a 35Z4. I never heard of a 35Z4. It's right, in, right there in writing. You may or may not be able to pick that up, but I looked at it with my uh, magnifying glass. It's a 35Z4. I really need the schematic on this. So what I'm going to do now is, this is going to be part one of this radio. I'm going to be hunting down a schematic because I don't understand why they are using these type of tubes in there. Now this tube is a 6A8. This one's a 6SK7. Let's see what this is. Alright, this is a 6SQ7. We'll put that in, in in a minute here. Both 6SQ7s. I couldn't get this out. I had to spray some deoxid in there. It must have been corroded in there. 6SQ7. 6SQ7. It's a weird, weird radio setup. Tube setup, I should say. That is weird. 35L6, 35L6. Somebody got a 50L6 in there. There was a little notation about using a 50L6 in here. Uh, not sure what that is. I have to look at it off camera. But 35L6, 26SQ7s. That's weird. Okay. Well, a 35L6, 35L6. 6SQ7, 6SQ7, 6A8, 6SK7, and a 35Z4. It's 108 to 125 volts, Series A, Ward's Airline, model 93BR, like in Baker Roger, dash 720A like an Alpha. Okay, so that concludes part one of the Ward's airline 
and I'm going to be hunting for a schematic. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two, which will be coming along to a computer near you.